Well, the Indianapolis Colts made a phone call to the Houston Texans about the possibility of taking a meeting with quarterback Deshaun Watson. The Texans said you'll get nothing and like it. I'm surprised the Colts even did it because I don't think the Colts would have traded for Deshaun Watson. I think they're gravitating away from the big splash quarterback expenditure and they're going to go a different way. I just think maybe the Colts were trying to stir up a little trouble here. And I joked about the possibility that that they, they express their interest that way so that Deshaun Watson ultimately will say, I'm only going to waive my no trade clause for the Colts. I don't think it's going to come to that, but I just think it's funny the Colts did it because I really don't think the Colts were interested. I just think the Colts were were feeling a little impish and wanting to force the Texans to say, no, we're not going to let you talk to me. Well, guy. maybe. You take your cuts. I mean, why not? Why not? It's Deshaun Watson. You know, like we've talked about, it's superstar when when hitting on all cylinders. And the Colts, you know, again, a team that you and I look at and go, damn, they're good. They're not far off. I, I mean, I'm a little interested to see what the hell they're going to do at quarterback. I am. I mean, I know everybody thinks of Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo. I want to go, okay, he can't practice. He can't practice. He can't do anything till July. He gets hurt all the time anyways. You're gonna you're gonna shit you're gonna trade Carson Wentz and get him the I didn't say the word I was gonna say something else I said S H I P okay all right but okay. they 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 okay. we're gonna trade Carson Wentz for what a uh, a quarterback who is rivaling Carson Wentz with dumb interceptions during the year and bonehead moments that to me is what I just I don't get either I'm gonna go wait we're gonna trade bonehead number one to get bonehead number two and <laughs> and deal with that and I'm trying to say that jokingly I know they're not boneheads in real life but you know with some of their decisions they make throwing the football I mean again the last play of Jimmy Garoppolo's career in San Francisco is dumb interception being twirled around and throwing a ball like Carson Wentz so here we just go so I, th that to me is where I look at the Colts and go, yeah, of course they tried to call the Texans because they're panicking right now. Yeah, uh, we, we said last week that Jimmy Garoppolo is basically Carson Wentz, except his teammates like him. I mean, that, that's yeah, that's and, a good and, way to put and it. We both yeah. agree, and yeah. we both agree that Carson Wentz is a better overall prospect. He's got a higher ceiling. Right. We've seen more from him. He's got better skills if you can just iron them out and point them in the right direction. As I said last week, Wentz can do the hard part of the job. It's the easy part of the job that he yeah, trips over. That's right. But that's he's right. now he's now stumbled his way to Washington. So the Colts aren't going to get. Deshaun Watson I how about how about if this meeting goes well today per multiple Ooh. reports between the Browns and Deshaun Watson Baker Mayfield oh boy they're trolling Baker Mayfield at this point Baker's going to be upset and you know what I, I I it's his own problem it's his own fault if he's upset and if you can't function if you get freaked out because your team is considering a major upgrade at quarterback how are you ever going to be trusted to be the major upgrade at quarterback if you're going to if you're going to lose it over the possibility that they're going to go get Deshaun Watson, but maybe Mayfield ends up in Indianapolis if it goes that way. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but we're talking about who the Colts get. You got a guy who's going to make $18.8 million this year in the last year of his rookie deal, the fifth-year option. That's not all that much money when you look at the quarterback market. You get one year with Mayfield. He's got to go somewhere. I mean, I can't imagine yeah. the Browns taking on $35 million for Watson and paying Mayfield no $18.8 way. Million. Right. No way. So either Mayfield goes to the Texans as part of the transaction, which is possible. He's from Texas, and that would put some fans in the stands. Yes. I don't know. He's better than Davis Mills. Right. Uh, but this, this uh, somebody told me last Thursday night, somebody in the know told me last Thursday night about the Vikings and the Browns being interested in Deshaun Watson. And when I heard the Browns, I thought, but – it's it's real. They would not be meeting with him if no they weren't way. interested because you do this dance, you are willingly undermining your relationship with your current starter and you're making it harder to sell to your fan base that that guy is your best possible alternative and your top choice. Yeah, and again, I think that's a little bit uh, – teams, there's definitely a lot of teams in football that look at Deshaun Watson and go, game changer. You know, just game change. It's probably why the Colts call. They're probably like, yeah, we know it's not, but damn, this guy, I mean, who knows? We get him on our team, we're in, we're Super Bowl team. And yes, so you don't pass up these opportunities, let alone you don't know where the future's going with Baker Mayfield. You have no idea right now. 
You know, what's Baker Mayfield asking for? What's his representation asking for money-wise? You know, it doesn't sound like you never – we never heard any rumors that they were even close or anything like that. So they must be far apart, let alone last year didn't give, do a lot to give them confidence to go, oh, wait, he's definitely the guy of the future. You know, that, so there's that issue. Baker Mayfield, I'm sure he is pissed off. Sorry, London, about seeing this today or last night, whenever it broke, I'm sure. But, yeah, to your point, he's got to understand that. You know, but he's going to look at it and go, wait, <clears throat> I'm the number one pick. You know, we went to the playoffs two years ago. Man, last year I put my body on the line and played hurt and did all that. You know, we didn't have a lot of, you know, help for me at the wide receiver position. So he's going to look at that and feel slighted. I understand that. But he can't let it affect him to where it becomes emotional outbursts or anything like that, to your point, Mike, certainly. And this one's, this one's interesting to see where this goes. This really is because this would be another one where you'd go game changer in the NFL, game changer for the AFC if Deshaun Watson ended up on the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, I wrote something yesterday about whether or not the mere fact that the Browns are interested in Watson should wake the Steelers up to possibly going after Watson because you're going to possibly have Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, and Mitch Trubisky as the week one starters in the AFC North, which could result in the Steelers being left in the dust if Trubisky doesn't play up to the level of these other guys. I mean, you got three true franchise quarterbacks in that division if Watson ends up in Cleveland. He's got to want to go to Cleveland. Yeah. He's got to want. He's got to want to waive his no trade clause. He holds the power here, Chris. Yes. Met with the Saints and Panthers yesterday, the Browns today, and maybe more teams to come. And I, I think they're playing this the right way. Over the weekend, it was the breathless reporting about this team's interested, and that team's interested, and that team's interested. So get everybody smoked out. Get everybody at the table. Then Deshaun Watson figures out who he's interested in because he's got that no trade clause hammer. Then you get a group of two, three, four teams that he would agree to be traded to. The Texans basically auction the contract to the guys that Watson will play for. The only problem is if it's down to one team, the Texans have a mess because they don't have the leverage of we'll just keep him because they're not just going to keep him. Right. The Seahawks had the leverage of we'll just keep Russell Wilson. It doesn't matter if there's only one team. If you don't give us what we like, we'll just keep him. The Texans can't do that because he's not going to play for them. They don't want him playing for them. They don't want to pay him $35 million to not play next year. So the Texans desperately need Watson to at least give a thumbs up to two teams and ideally three or four so you can really goose the bidding. But if you're Watson, you also don't want to go to a team – that's been stripped of draft picks, too many draft picks, yeah, right. where it's gutted and you're not going to have a team around you because of everything that was given up to get you from the Texans. Uh, it's risky. It's where a place like Cleveland to me would be, you know, uh, less riskier than the, the, the Panthers or the Saints because their team's kind of set up. I mean, what you look at Cleveland again, I mean, we there's nobody in football that doesn't disagree. Cleveland was one of the disappointing teams and stories of football last year. I mean, they're too talented not to be in the playoffs. And if you're Deshaun Watson, that'd be one of those teams you look at and go, whoa, they're on the cusp. They just got Amari Cooper. We got another receiver just in the mix with, you know, Schwartz who can really run and, Don, you know, Donovan People Jones. And, you know, you got tight end play and running backs. Wow. I mean, they, they are close. And, and I'm like, I mean, what do, what do you think here? Like, what's what's the Florio pasta meatballs gut here say? Like, is this one where they just look at it and go, wait, Deshaun Watson's too good. We got to take a chance and take our cut and just see if we can get him. Or is it like more about, man, we just the contract situation with Baker Mayfield. We don't know where the hell it's going to go. So we got to look at this option because we don't know where we'll be in a year from now. Like, what, what's your kind of gut on that? I think they're seriously going after him. I don't yeah. think you you undermine your relationship with Baker Mayfield. Yeah, that's a good point. That's right. Un unless unless the strategy is we're going to put Baker Mayfield under maximum pressure to see how he responds, which means that the Watson flirtation is a precursor to them adding someone who would be real competition for Baker Mayfield. That's possible, too, that Watson is the shot across the bow and they're going to do something else where when that guy comes in, he doesn't supplant Mayfield. He doesn't knock Mayfield out of town, but he's going to test Mayfield. And you look, as we've said, if you're going to crumble, if you're going to get pissy, if you're going to go mope because there's competition in the building, then how are you ever going to win a Super Bowl? How are you ever going to be the guy who holds up under the pressure of navigating an ultra-difficult AFC playoff field? It's not going to happen.
you just go out and do your job better than ever. Right. That's how you deal with it if you're yeah. Baker Mayfield. So I think they're serious about Watson. I do, too. They wouldn't be doing it. No, I, I do, too. Watson's serious about them. Watson would say, don't bother to come to to Houston to meet with Agreed. me. Agreed. Uh, so yeah, I, I, here, I, I, here's a yeah. point I want to make, though. Go here's ahead. a concern I have. Yep. The lawyer in me has a concern. Deshaun Watson's got a pretty busy day today. We talked about this yesterday. He's got a pretty big day, a trying day. He's got a day that if it goes off the rails when he's being interrogated under oath for hours and hours by Tony Busby, who represents the 22 women who have sued him for sexual misconduct during massage therapy sessions. The first lawsuit actually came to light 52 weeks ago today. If he does not perform well at these deposition sessions starting today, He's got to give real answers starting today. If it goes poorly, scatter if you're interested in Deshaun Watson. If that transcript is a mess, if that video is embarrassing to him and to anyone associated with him, scatter. And he's going to have to answer some tough questions because the guy had a clear habit of searching Instagram in in search of massages, and his lawyer has already admitted that some of those massages – became sexual encounters, consensual sexual encounters. The problem is there are 22 individuals who objected to the way that Deshaun Watson conducted himself. And if it does not go well, I don't know how you can justify trading for Deshaun Watson. And I know at least one potentially interested team that definitely is going to want to see how things go today. And if you're the Saints, the Panthers, and the Browns, you have to. See how it goes today. Yes. Before you make any final decisions. And if I'm Rusty Harden, I'm saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. My guy needs to be ready and focused completely and exclusively on today. He doesn't need to be thinking about where he's going to play football next. He doesn't need to be spending time Monday night meeting with the Saints and Panthers. And I know it's not an arduous meeting that's going to leave him physically drained, but you want you want him to be thinking about what was hammered into him yesterday to prepare him for today. You want him to have a re- a restful and relaxing Monday night. You want him to get a good night's sleep. You don't want him to have trouble falling asleep because he's got all these different thoughts in his head about where he's going to be playing. Let's remove the distraction. Let's focus on the task at hand. Let's get through Tuesday, and then we'll worry about where he's going to play. The problem is I think the Texans want to get this done by Wednesday to get his salary and his cap number off the books, and these other teams need to know what's going on so they can move on to someone else. So Watson's in a tough spot here. I just hope it doesn't end up being a debacle today because he's too distracted by what his next football stop is going to be. Yeah, hopefully not. I mean, hopefully this is something he's been preparing for for his sake and his team's sake. That This is like he's been studying and grinding on this for probably a month, I would hope, at least how to answer some of these questions. I 100% agree with you that if – you know, he falters and says some things he shouldn't say or that it, it's implied that actions were done that, you know, just don't look right and are going to add to the chatter and and just the, the, the spotlight that's put on Deshaun Watson. If you sign him to a new team, it's going to be dangerous. You're right. So these teams that are interested are going to be, you know, severely evaluating what he has said today. And then, you know, to me, Mike, too, with all these things, right, I mean, we know like, we, we've all heard, you know, three number ones for Deshaun Watson and all that. I, I still got to think they're not going to get maximum trade value for Deshaun Watson with the current landscape. I got to think that's still a real thing. You know, again, you know, you made the point. And what, I, what I'm asking you, I guess, is just how much does it get devalued? You know, teams are going to sit there and go, well, fine, keep them, Houston Texans, keep them. See how that works. I mean, there is that aspect. We, like you said, we know they have to get rid of him. They have to. He doesn't want them. They don't want him. And they got to figure out how to spend the money. I just wonder how much it devalues the trade overall when it's all said and done. Well, that's why you need two teams, at least, to be negotiating with each other. And Saints-Panthers are perfect because they're in the same division. It's a tug of war between division rivals to get to Sean Watson if he's willing to play for both teams. That's how you get maximum value. But if things go poorly today, that's when teams may say, "Mm, sorry, I'm out. I'm done. And then if the Saints would tap out and the Panthers would be the last man standing, 
then it's harder to get a great deal out of the Panthers because, again, the Panthers can say, fine, fine, we got Sam Darnold under contract at $18.8 million. We'll get ready for the season. You go ahead with Deshaun Watson. Get ready to pay him $35 million. Oh, by the way, he's got a $17 million fully guaranteed roster bonus that vests in a few days for next year. So now you're going to owe him $52 million fully guaranteed. over the next- Go ahead, keep him. Go ahead, go ahead. Keep holding out and holding out for a trade package you're never going to get. Um, let me tell you, here's how big the stakes are for Watson, because you got to ask yourself how much you want to spend, how much money you actually want to devote to defending yourself against a case like this. And frankly, at a certain point, you just spend that money on resolving the case and moving on. But this case has sufficiently high stakes that if I'm Deshaun Watson, I am authorizing Rusty Harden to charge me at his top hourly rate to grill me in a mock session that will go exactly like the deposition will be today. And I hope, for Deshaun Watson's sake, at some point in the last couple of weeks, month, or whatever, there's been a time where he has sat down across the table from Rusty Harden or someone with his firm, because if Rusty Harden's the one to do it, it could actually impair the relationship between lawyer and client if Rusty Harden does it the right way. You need to have been through a situation where someone comes at you, someone from your legal team comes at you hard comes at you with tough questions, over-the-top, ridiculous stuff to get you ready for this because he's going to experience it today. And I can't overstate how important it is to be ready for that experience. You can't allow your emotion to take over. You can't have the Jack Nicholson moment in A Few Good Men where you finally break down and say, you're damn right I did because that's what they're trying to get you to do. I ordered the code red. I ordered it. That's (laughs) That's what they're trying to get you to do. They're trying to, I said this yesterday, pierce through the preparation. So the preparation has to be damn Good. The stakes, as far as civil cases go, it's as high as it can be because it could dramatically reduce his future earning potential, although he's still got his $35 million fully guaranteed for 2022. I would spend a big chunk of that $35 million to be able to withstand what's coming today, and I sure as hell would not be meeting last night with multiple teams and thinking about meeting with the Browns today, but I think the circumstances – Remove that luxury of being able to focus on one thing, Chris. He's got he's got to balance these multiple plates because once this deposition's over, the next order of business is where am I going to play? And yeah. you hope that the deposition doesn't scare all the teams away. Yeah, that, that's right. I, I would think he schooled up on the deposition. This is not an idiot. I mean, this is you know I think and Rusty Harden, as we know, is a big time lawyer. So I would think that they're pretty schooled up on that. And you know, two. You know, yes, the meetings are a distraction and whatever with the football teams, but nothing like it, it's it's not like it's like world beating. He's been thinking about teams all together. Now he's just getting a chance to meet these people in person and talk about it. You know, they're not reinventing the wheel. So hopefully he can compartmentalize here and and go, OK, yeah, I met them, blah, blah, blah. But I still know I got this task at hand for his sake. We'll see where it goes. Uh, but this is. Yeah, we got a lot of Deshaun Watson talk left in us, I think, over here in the next few weeks. I'm waiting for the Eagles to make their move. I thought I they think would the Eagles hear are it. the best yeah. fit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Maybe they you. don't want to screw things. I mean, but I, it's not like Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts isn't going to have a potential Baker Mayfield reaction. I think Jalen Hurts gets it. And he's been through it. He got thrown out of Alabama for Tua Tonga Vailoa. He's been passed over in the draft. He was a second round pick. And he realizes Deshaun Watson is Deshaun Watson. If they got an opportunity to get him, I mean, that's the business. That's how it yes. goes. I think Hertz seems to be very pragmatic about how things work. So it's not like it's going to be a big deal. But I think, I, I think you got to think about the fan base. You don't want to raise the expectations of the folks in Philly that you got a shot at Deshaun Watson and then not deliver. Then you're going to have folks really upset with where things currently yeah. are. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't heard their name here recently. You know, like, like we've talked about, we, we did hear it during the year and leading up to the trade deadline. And your point about Jalen Hurts, I think, is very real. I do. I don't think he'll blink an eye at it. You know, when I was at the Combine, Nick Sirianni, I got a chance to talk to him for my podcast. And the one thing that he emphasized is that the guy is, you know, he's, he's unflappable. He is. You know, and, and he's he, he he's a ex you know, he's a coach's son. He grew up in that environment. He understands about football and all the crap that goes along with it. You know, Sirianni 
You know, he even said, like, Jalen, he welcomes being yelled at. That's rare. So I do think he can handle it, but you're right. I think that's the big point, the thing you said at the end. You don't want to put that out there to your fan base unless you think you got a real legit chance of making that happen and making that move. You know, for a lot of reasons, not only the fan base, but why not just keep it quiet so Jalen Hurts doesn't have to hear about it until he has to hear about it. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we heard the Eagles jump in this thing if things go smoothly today for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, um, Seahawks have been mentioned, although as I continue to say, 2022 Seahawks with Deshaun Watson, not much different than the 2020 yes. Texans. Right. Right? Right. Or Why do you want like, to do that to yourself exactly, if you're Deshaun? Exactly, exactly. It just makes no sense to me, at least. You know, the Seahawks, you just go, wait. I mean, it just, it just, just we, we, we traded away, you know, Russell Wilson, and we thought we were going to build the team, and now we're just going to go with the quarterback again and still not be able to build the team. That's where it wouldn't make sense to me. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.